Hey, what's up guys? Jeremy here. Two axis Cartesian robots come in a wide variety of shapes and sizes. A good chunk of them are even custom made for specific projects. To make sure you can use your specific T-Bot, Robodiki lets you create your own custom Cartesian robot in just a few simple steps. Let's go through those together. The first step to create a two linear axis robot is to import a 3D model. Here, I have a rail provided by Lucas Robotics. I will drag and drop the step file to load it in my station. Here, I'm using a step file, but I just or STL would also work. Okay. Okay, perfect. Now the 3D model is loaded, so I can open the mechanism builder. So utilities and model mechanism or robot. The default option should be the one to create a linear rail. But in this case, we want the two linear axis. Here you have all the indications and steps you need to follow. So if you look at the image, it shows you how the horizontal and vertical rail uh, and the carriage should be positioned and how it will move with respect to the base reference frame. FB for frame base. The frame base will be positioned at 0, 0, 0. We will be able to add a name to our mechanism here. And here we'll be able to select our base frame. I'll talk more on that in a few minutes. And finally, we can add the 3D model of the rail here, the motion direction and the limits here. For the 3D model, there are three drop down menus. This means that we need three geometries or three objects to fill those ones. Unfortunately, the 3D model we have is grouped in one single piece. That's not really an issue as we can split it inside RoboDK, but I will fast forward that part where I retrieved the 3D model colors and split it into three pieces as I already did a tutorial on that specific subject. So go watch it if you need more information on that. Now that we have one object called horizontal rail, one object called vertical rail, and one object called carriage, we are ready to go. Let's open the rail builder. So again, utilities and model mechanism or robot. Let's name the mechanism T-Bot. Okay. Now we need the position of our base frame. The exact position of your rail base will vary according to your setup. In this case, I'll go for a normal or let's say more generic approach. I will consider that my base frame should be at the zero position of the rail. So here, I will go ahead and create a reference frame exactly there. I'll create one and I'll name it frame base. Now I need to modify the position of the frame. So let's open the frame panel by double clicking the frame. Okay. Now we need to measure the position of the center of the surface here where we want to attach the robot. And I need this position with respect to the station origin. So the station origin is here. Let's open our measurement tool. In this case, as the surface is complex, we can't simply use the detect plane option. If we do so, it will give us a center point somewhere around here, which doesn't make sense. So let's go for a little pro tip here. So follow me. Uh, I will use the snap on midpoint and edges. I will select this edge. That will give me the center point of this one here. Then I will do the same with this edge here. So if I select the center point here, it will then give me the distance between these two lines. In that current state, it's not very useful, but what you can now do is select create geometry. That will create a line between these two points. Now that I have that line, I can clear selection and measure the position of the center point of that newly created line, just like that. So now that I have the distance between the origin and the center point here, I can press here to copy these values and I'll paste them as the frame position, just like that. 
So now the frame position matches with the reference image that we have here. Now we just need to make sure the orientation are the same. For that to happen, I need to rotate counterclockwise 90 degrees around X. That means a rotation of 90 degrees. Okay. Then I will need to rotate 90 degrees around the Z axis. So just like that. Perfect. Now everything should match. We can select our base frame here and the real 3D models here. If the position of the reference frame you used isn't the 0, 0, 0, X, Y, Z as we were aiming for, then you need to enter the distance as D1 and D2. So I don't need to do that here. Now I can enter the length of the rails or in fact the travel of the carriage. So here it's 10,150 millimeters for the horizontal travel. So that means I need to enter zero for the minimum and 10,150 for the maximum. I can then press update to create the robot. RoboDQ will automatically create a duplicate of the reference frame 3D model you imported so that you can reuse them in the future if you ever need to. So for now, I'll just hide them. I can now move along the horizontal axis and everything seems great. For the second axis, it really depends on your need. So if you were to simply enter 0 and 2000 millimeters, so the length of this section here is 2000 millimeters. So if we were to simply use these values and press update, the robot will think that this position is the 0 and that we want to go up to 2 meters. So that doesn't make much sense. First thing we could do is simply invert sense. Now update. This way the robot will start from zero and will go down 2000 millimeters. That's potentially what you want. But on the contrary, if you prefer having the zero at the lowest point and 2000 at the highest point, you can simply enter minus 2000 for D2 and 2000 for the build joints. So that would give you the expected result. You can also modify the home position if you want. Okay, I can test my T-Bot, make sure it moves in the right direction, make sure the limits are good, and obviously we need to do that for both axes. If I'm fine with the result, I can press OK on the model mechanism window, and just like that, in a few minutes, you are able to create any Cartesian robot you want. You can then save it as a .robot file and load it in any other RoboDK station in the future. So to do that, you just right click, save as. Okay, that's pretty much everything for today's video. I hope you liked it. If you did, please subscribe to our channel. This way you won't miss any new tips or walkthroughs. If you have any technical questions, you should definitely visit our online forum. Our team will be happy to interact with you. In any case, have a great day, guys.